is I have a, uh, a circuit that's given to me right here. Uh, I'm already told the current, so that's actually a good step. Uh, and it says, what's the potential difference across resistor R? Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and take it a step past this, and I'm going to say, you know, um, my color's right here. Also say, what is, what is the resistance of R also? One step and then two steps, okay? So I know that one amp flows through the circuit. Um, and because these are in series, a charge that leaves here, I know they're in series because the charge leaves here, has to go through here, all right? And so uh, I have one amp of current that's flowing through because of these two resistors and because of this battery. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so if I know one amp is flowing through here, then I can apply, and I'll call this, uh, let's just call this R1 and this R2. I like the numbers, so this is really asking about what R2 is. Okay, so um, so for R1, I can actually find the potential difference across R1 using Ohm's law. Okay, what's the current through R1 is one amp. All right, what's the resistance of R1? Six ohms. So I have six volts of potential across, potential difference, sorry, uh, across this resistor right here. And just so happens to be six because again, the current was one. If the current was higher, then it wouldn't exactly be six. Now, I need to know how much potential difference is across here. Well, my loop rule says that if I gain 10 volts here, as I go around, I must lose before I come back right here. All right, so I go around, I have 10 volt, 10 volt, 10 volt. Oh, I drop six volt, all right? And I know that this has to be all zero. So if this is six, uh, if I, this is four, because I dropped six, and this is four, and this is zero, then the potential difference is four volts. Okay, I can just do that using the loop rule. All right, so I know the potential difference is four volts across resistor two. So that's what the first question asks. Second part says, what is resistor two? What's the value? Well, again, Ohm's law, Ohm's law, Ohm's law, over and over again. All right, so this is the current through, uh, it needs to be through two, potential difference across two, and the resistance of two. Okay, rearrange that, resistance of two is the voltage across two through the divided by the current through two. Well, the voltage is four volts. The current is one amp. So the resistance is four ohms. All right, and that makes sense because that's six ohms and this is four ohms. The total resistance would be 10 ohms, which then 10 volts and 10 ohms would create one amp of current. All right. So, okay, now this example says, what's the current in the circuit? And again, I'll take it one step further and also say, what is the voltage uh, for each one, for each resistor, the voltage of each, each resistor individually, and we'll do it for each one. First, I'd like to assign numbers, R1, R2, and R3. All right, so what do I notice about these? Uh, well, first, I notice that these are in series because a charge that leaves here goes through this and it has to go through this one and it has to go through this one and then back to here. All right, so that means that they are in series uh, as circuits. Okay, so um, what I can do, what I always need to do is shrink this down to figure out what the total resistance between all those are. I need to make it a simple, simple circuit that looks like this, okay? With this being some equivalent resistance. And this is nine volts right here. So if these are in series, right, then what is this equivalent resistance? Well, for series, all right, the equivalent of for series is uh, just R1 plus R2 plus uh, R3, okay? And uh, so this is 25 plus 31 plus this. Uh, 19 plus 31 is 50, so that's 50 plus 25 is 75, 75 ohms, okay? 
So my equivalent resistance is 75 ohms. Now, once I do that, let me get my calculator. I can find out how much current is coming out of the battery. Okay, so my overall current is my overall potential difference, which is from the battery, and the resistance, um, the equivalent resistance. So my voltage is 9 volts, or my potential difference across the battery, and then my resistance is 75 ohms. Okay, so 9. Oops, let me pause this. Hold on. Okay, my trusty uh, TI 89 calculator batteries have died, so I'm going to have to use this uh, uh, calculator up here. So uh, let's see, that's going to be 9 uh, divided by 75. So 0 0.12 amps. Okay, that's how much is coming out of the battery right here. Okay, now I changed colors because I'm going to be going backwards now. You'll see what that means here in a second. So now I know that 0 0.1 amps comes out of the battery and it passes through this equivalence of resistance. Now, I apply that back here. I say that, okay, 0 0.12 amps leaves the battery. And the question becomes for this one, how much flows through? How much flows through? How much flows through? Well, they're in series and basically this has to continue in the whole circuit because it's just a simple series circuit it has to be the same here. So if I want to know the voltage across one, it's the current through one, Ohm's law, times the resistance of one. So the current is 0 0.12 amps. The resistance is 25. And let's go here, times 25. Oh, that's three. Three volts. Okay, this one is going to be, no, it's, it's going to be the same equation. I'll shorten it a little bit. So 0 0.12 times uh, 31. 31 ohms. So let's go back to 0 0.12, but this time times 31. And that should be 3.72. Okay, and last one, V3, is 0 0.12 times 19. Oh, 2.28. Okay, now I should always check, if I use the loop rule, if I gain 9 volts here, then all of this is at 9, right? Then I drop from 9 to, I drop by 3 volts, so I'm at 6. Then I drop by this many volts, so I guess I'm at 2.28 right here. And then how many do I drop in the last one? I drop 2.28, so I'm back down at 0, so loop rule, check, I have done this correctly, all right? So you can see I always use loop roll to check. Okay, this next example is just a concept. Question is, which bulb is brightest? Bulb A or bulb B or C? Uh, bulb A is on a circuit by itself with the battery. Again, this is a battery sim uh, symbol with identical batteries there. And then I have um, B and C, which are you know identical bulbs to A, but they have two of them on there. So let's think about this. Which bulb is brightest? Um, really what we're going to be concentrating on is power output, which is proportional to the amount of current that's flowing through it. So keep, keep in mind that if these are identical bulbs, then the resistance for each one is the same. All right, so this one has a certain potential difference, and it has one bulb. So it has, let's say, a resistance value of, uh, let me go back to... All right, resistance value of R. Okay, I have some potential difference here and some resistance there, so I'm going to get some kind of current out of this. Okay, now 
this has a resistance of R, and this has a resistance of R. Same amount of resistance. So together, the circuit has an equivalence of 2R. But if I have the same potential as here, and this one gets I, right, but I have twice the resistance, right? So if this is the same for both, but I have twice the resistance, then if this is V over R, then basically the I for this one down here is going to be one half the current. Oops, I divided by two. All right, so one half the current. This one gets half the current because it has twice the resistance, right? Just like two people stepping on a hose as the water is flowing through, it's going to slow down even more. And because brightness really talks about power, one of our power equations is this. So if the resistance is the same, all right, and you have an, if this is a, sorry, if this is the same and you have a, a larger amount of current going through, then you'll get more power uh, out of the bulb. So this one's going to be brighter. So by adding bulbs in series, you make all the bulbs dimmer. Keep in mind, as you go through like this, do not think about you know, this first one versus the second one, because both of these get the same amount of current. Right? This one doesn't steal more energy because it's first, and this one gets seconds or anything else like that. It's the same amount of current regardless, so they must be identical here. Okay, now we're looking at uh, more of a parallel circuit. All right, now this is a parallel circuit. Uh, how do I know it's parallel? Because if the charge leaves here, it has three options to where to go, all right? If it goes through one resistor, it cannot go through the other. It can't loop back and do you know anything squiggly like that. So I know that these are in parallel. It has nothing to do with the fact that these are parallel lines right here, but it has to do with about a charge moving. If it flows through one, it doesn't have to flow through the others. That's the rule for series. And again, uh, this is the opposite there. All right, so again, I need to shrink this down into one uh, equivalent circuit. So first thing I do is shrink it down. I need to make one equivalent simple circuit with one equivalent resistance. Here's my battery. This is 12 volts. And I need to know what this equivalent resistance is. Okay, uh, well... The equivalent resistance for parallel is this equation, R1 plus R1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Now call this one uh, R1, R2, and R3. 1 over 58 plus 1 over 70 plus 1 over 42. Okay, 1 over 58 plus 1 over 70 plus 1 over 42. Alright, so I have to do this here in my calculator. It's going to be a little tricky, but let's see. Alright, so let's see, 58 and take an inverse. Add 70 inverse get an equal, then add 42 inverse and get an equal. Okay, so I know all of this is equal to that, but that is not what the equivalent resistance is. That is not the equivalent. What is the equivalent? I have to do this last thing because this is one over, so I have to flip this answer right here. So what I get is an equivalent resistance of 18 point, I'll just say 18.1. Do three significant figures here. So my equivalent resistance is 18.1 amps. So the question becomes how much current is flowing through here, flowing out of the battery. So my current, again Ohm's law, is my potential difference supplied by a battery divided by the equivalent resistance. That's 12 divided by 18.1. And actually, I'm going to get rid of this 0.1. Just it would be easier to use a nice nice little number. So 12 divided by 18. Oh, gosh. Um, why am I fading here? Two-thirds. 
which is 0 0.66 repeating amps. Okay, 0 0.66 amps. Okay. All right. So that's how many amps are leaving the battery right here. Zero, oh, I forgot. Go back. I like to keep track of these things because they're going to get more and more complex. So I'm going to make this 0 0.66 amps right here. Because the second part, which I didn't uh, say, what's the current? What's the current through each resistor? Let's find out that. And what happens is that 0.66 amps leaves the battery, because we know this. And it comes right here, and what happens is some of it goes here. I'll call this I1. Some of it goes here. I2, and some of it goes here. Okay. Now, it, it does not split, always split evenly. Again, these have different resistances here, so it's not going to split evenly. But it will send more current down the least resistance and it will send less current down the most resistance, and this will be somewhere in the middle, okay? So it actually will distribute what will be proportional. So you can do it that way if you wanted to, um, but it will distribute actually proportionally. But to actually find this um, well, we're gonna have to do Ohm's Law. So let's go over here, and we wanna know the current through one. All right, what's Ohm's Law? Well, that's the potential difference across one, divided by the resistance of one. Okay, what is the potential difference across one from here to here? Well, this is attached to this wire, which means it's at plus 12, and this is attached through this wire, which it means it's at zero. So what's the potential difference? Well, these are in parallel, so they all have to have the same uh, potential difference, which is the same as the battery, which is 12 volts. All right, divided by 58 ohms and 12 divided by 58 0 0.2 all right so 0 0.21 amps current 2 is still 12 volts across all right this is still a difference of 12 volts and but this resistance is 70 ohms all right so 12 divided by 70 0 0.17, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. So 0 0.17 amps. Okay, current three. Again, this potential difference is still 12 volts because this wire is all 12, this wire is all zero. So this is 12 divided by 42. And last one, 12 divided by 42. 0 0.2 nine sure 0 0.29 amps all right now my check for this one is not necessarily the loop rule i could do that but i mean each loop is pretty boring it goes up 12 and i know it goes down 12 and it goes up 12 and down you know whatever loop you do uh, but i'm going to use the junction rule so the current going in must be equal to the total current going out of a junction. So we can we can imagine this as just one three-way junction right there. Okay? So how much current is going in? 0 0.66 amps. And that must be equal to the total going out. So 0 0.21 and for our current one, 0 0.17 and then 0 0.29. Um actually this was 66 six repeating, right? So um Okay, these two together, uh, this plus this is 0.5, uh, plus this is 0 0.67. So yeah, probably with some rounding errors, yeah, these are equal, so check, I did this correct. All right, so that's an example there for... Okay, now comes the fun part, or the hard part, really, because I'm going to have a mixture of both parallel and... Um, series. These are complex circuits. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to have to 
find us find you know the, again the goal is for you know in this case is uh, reduce it down to equivalent resistance because that's always going to be the first step when you analyze circuits so let's just practice this uh, finding the equivalent resistance first what I need to do is look at this I need to find what is in parallel and what is in series and I need to find one point one thing that is obviously in parallel or obviously in series and start there um, I liken this to a Sudoku puzzle because of that's kind of what you do. You first thing you do is you find what is in, um, you know, what is you know obviously this number, and then you you know logically have to work backwards from there. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at this and I say, oh, okay. Um, well, this branch is in parallel with this entire branch, but I don't know what the equivalent of this branch is, so I can't do anything. Oh, well, this is in series with this combination here. So these, this one is in series with this combination, but I don't know what that combination is. Um, these two are in parallel, all right? So actually, I can actually find these because that's just they're just in parallel with each other right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, simplify this. I'm going to go, again, I like to break things down using black here. I'm going to simplify this not quite to one equivalent, but one that looks like, oops, it's like this, and again, my drawings of resistors are horrible, and that's okay. All right, it looks like this, and so I, I'm going to take this right here and simplify it first. All right, simplify that down to one equivalent resistor of those two. Uh, the other thing I like to do is also give it numbers, so I'll call this one R1. Uh, this will be R2, R3, and then R4. So what's the equivalent resistance of these two? Because uh, this is still R1. Uh, this becomes what I call the equivalent resistance of 2, 3. And this is the equivalent, uh, sorry, this is still the resistance of 4. So what is R2, 3? Uh, well, R2, 3 is, these are in parallel, so it's 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. All right, that's 1 over... Um, See, R2 is 90 plus 1 over 45, which is R3. Uh, okay, so this is 1 90th, I'm right inside, I don't know why I always write sideways. 1 90th plus, I'm going to go right, right side up again. Uh, 1 90th plus 2 90th, right? That's 3 90th. And again, that is not the equivalent resistance. That's 3 90th, which is 1 over that. The equivalent resistance is, flip everything, right, which is 90 divided by 3, which is 30 ohms. And that's, okay, so my equivalent of R23 is 30 ohms. And I'd say, does that make sense? Okay, well, by putting them in parallel, they should, the equivalent should be less than that. And that's what I do see. So this is 30 ohms. Uh, and which means this is 10 ohms. Uh, sorry, that's still the same value, and this is 60 ohms here. All right, now I look at this right here, and I need to find something that is obviously in series and ob or obviously in parallel. And what I see is that these are obviously in series. So I can replace them with one equivalent resistance and because this is 1 and this is 2, 3, I call this R1, 2, 3. And this is still R4 at 60 ohms. All right, so R1, 2, 3, well, these are in series, so I just add them, right? That's an easy one. So I know that this is 40 ohms. All right, last, I need to make just one equivalent resistor for all this. So what am I left with? I'm left with one parallel one. So my equipment is parallel, so my equivalent in this case is going to be 1 over R123 plus 1 over R4. Okay, 1 over 40 plus 1 over 60 
Uh, common denominator is going to be um, sorry, 120. So this is 3 120 plus 2 over 120. Equals 5 over 120. And again, that's not the actual resistance. I have to flip, take the inverse here. So it's 120 divided by 5. Uh, and that would be 24 ohms. That is my equivalent resistance right here, 24 ohms. And again, that is always going to be a first step because eventually you have to, this will be attached to a battery. All right. But the idea is that this is a parallel that is in series with this one, and those this combination is in parallel. Okay, congratulations, you made it to the big time now. Okay, because we are now ready to do a full circuit that is complex, and we're going to find out everything we can about every little thing we can, and that's okay. So first of all, find the current, the potential difference, and the power consumed, consumed is a quote, you know, kind of, that's just the word we use, uh, dissipated or the power converted, whatever, uh, for every resistor in the diagram. Ooh, and I got this, and I got this diagram right here. So I need to know, what's the first one? Current, potential difference across each resistor, and then the power. And I have one, two, three, four resistors, I'll call this uh, R, one, I'll call this R2, R3, and R4. So I'm going to make this chart here R1, R2, R3, and R4. And there will be one of these on your test. Okay, so very important here to do all of this right here. Okay. So what I need to do, as always, the first step is shrink all this resistance down into one resistor to know how much current is coming out of that battery. All right. So I need to find a spot that is obviously in series or obviously in parallel. Well, if I look, this branch right here, this entire branch, is in parallel with this one right here. All right. But I don't know the equivalent of this branch. Okay. Well, this is in series with this combination here, but I don't know what that combination is. But these two right here are in parallel with each other. So this is my weak spot that I'm going to shrink down first. And I do it step by step by step. And I write down my diagram every time. I know it takes a while, but that's what we're going to do. So R1, 800. And then this is going to be replaced. We draw this like this. So this is R2 and R3. So it's going to be replaced with an R23 equivalent. And um, I don't know what that value is. Uh, R4 is still here. And this is 560. Okay, so let's find out what R23 is. All right, so let's see, right here, I'm gonna say uh, one over R two three is equal to one over R two plus one over R three. So one over 600 plus one over 400. Wow, okay, common denominator, uh, this is two over 1200. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, let's see, this would be 3 over 1,200. Uh, so this is going to be uh, 5 over 1,200. But that is not the answer because I have to flip. And that's 1,200 divided by 5. Uh, and that should be, I think it's 200 and, 200 and uh, 240. All right, so this is an equivalent of uh, 240. All right, so this is 240. Now I look at this circuit right here, and I look for anything that's in obviously in series and obviously in parallel. 
this entire branch is in parallel with this one. These two right here are in series. So these are my easy ones right here. So I need to replace those two with one simpler equivalent. So I redraw this. Uh, again, this is still 12 volts. And this is still R1 being 800 ohms. But now this one is an equivalent of um, these two together. So I'll call this R234. And then what's that value? Well, this is just adding up these together. So this would be 560 plus 240. So this is 800 ohms. OK. Um, all right, so I need to replace this with one equivalent right here. Now, these are in uh, parallel. So I have to actually let me, I have to draw my new diagram here with one, what I call just equivalent resistance. And this is 12 volts. All right, so one equivalent resistance right here. Um, OK, to figure out what that equivalent, in this case, I need to go uh, 1 over, since they're parallel, I have to use the parallel equation. It's 1 over R234 uh, two, three, four plus uh, 1 over R1. Uh, each one of these is 800 plus 1 over 800 is 2 over 800. And I flip that and I give it 800 divided by 2. So my equivalent is 400 ohms. Does that make sense? Yes, because I added two high resistance in parallel, which made it a lower resistance overall which is kind of an odd thing, but it works. So my last step, I need to know what is this current coming out of the battery and going through this simple loop. So what is this current right here? So last thing I do to find that is potential difference divided by resistance. Uh, potential difference is Ohm's law, so I'm talking about 12, uh, sorry, 12 volts resistance of uh, 400 ohms. Okay, so 12 divided by 400, let me go back to my calculator here. Point zero 0.03 amps, and that's a little, that's a small amount of current, but again, this is a high resistance, so it kind of makes sense. So I know that this is 0 0.03 amps. That's how much is current coming out of the battery. Uh, that's still not anything that I know up here, All right? We're going to have to get, so I know how much is coming out of the battery now. And now I'm going to have to work backwards through all my diagrams to figure out how much is going through each one. All right, to fill out this current category right here. So uh, what I do, and I switch when I go backwards, I switch to red, is that I know on this diagram, I take my information from here, and I know in this diagram, that I have a current of 0 0.03 amps coming out of the, the battery, which means I have some amount of current that goes this way, and I'll call it current through 2, 3, 4, and then some amount of current that goes through here, current through 1, okay? Now, these are actually, actually I can I can solve that because these are actually the same amount of resistance. So that means actually half of it will go through here and the other half will go through there. There's no preferred channel. So actually I can go ahead and do this for R1. So R1 I know is one half of 0 0.03, which is 0 0.00, uh, sorry, no, 0 0.015 amps. I know that, okay. Um, what else do I know about resistor 1? What's the potential difference across resistor 1? Well, that's 12 volt here, and this is 0 volt here. The difference is 12 volts, so that is the potential difference across resistor 1. Um, and what about power? Um, power is, okay, these two, power is current times uh, voltage. All right, so power, oops, let me make this smaller. So power is these two multiplied together. 
current times uh, voltage. All right, so 0.15 times 12 volts. Well, sorry, 0 0.015 times 12. So point, uh, 0 0.18. And that's watts. Okay. Um, all right. So I got this. I actually got resistor one all taken care of, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I'm going to focus on this now. Um, I know that uh, I just found out that half of it went this way, so 0 0.015 amps went this way, which means that's how much is flowing through this equivalent resistance right here. So I'm going to take this information. And I know going through this right here is 0 0.015 amps. Going through this loop right here. So again, that was what was said right here. So the question is, how much goes through resistor 2,3? How much goes through here? Well, again, it's, they're in series, so it's the same amount. So actually, I know that now the resistance of 4 that for resistor 4, I have 0.15 amps going through. 0, 0.15, sorry. So I know that because that just means these are in series, so again, it has to have the same here. All right, um, also for resistor 4, let's just concentrate on 4 because this is still a combination. If I know that it is 560 ohms of resistance and it's this much current going through it, I can find um, the potential difference. So let's say the potential difference for 4 is the current, this is just Ohm's law, through 4 times the resistance of 4. How much current is going through 4? 0 0.015. That's going to be times 560 ohms of resistance. All right, so where did my calculator go? All right. So this is going to be uh, 0 0.015 times uh, 560. Okay, 8.4 volts. Oops, sloppy. 8.4 volts. So I go here for resistor 4, this is 8.4. Okay, then it becomes what's power? All right, so power is my P equals IV. Actually, I'll just write this because I'm just going to use that. So P equals IV, so that's going to be my current times my voltage. Uh, so if I already have my voltage right here, then my current is times 0 0.015. So 0 0.126 watts. Okay. Okay. What's left? Uh, R2 and 3. So really what I gotta do, it, what I have to do is take my information from here and apply it to, to this. Alright, if I need to know, let's start off with, uh, the. if I need to know the current coming through here and the current coming through here, I know how much um, flows in, which is 0 0.15, and I know how much flows out, but I don't know which way it goes. I do know that more of that current will go through here and less of it will go through here because this has a lower resistance and this has a higher resistance. So I don't know that right now. It will be proportional, but I don't feel like doing that. Um, so what I would say is, let's see. Okay, what is the potential difference across right here? Well, I know that 0 0.015 um, uh, 0 0.015 amps flows through a 240 ohm resistor. So what is the voltage or potential difference across resistors 2, 3? All right, so that's going to be uh, voltage um, is my this is Ohm's law, current through 2, 3 times the resistance of 2, 3. The current is 0 0.015 amps. Resistance is 240 ohms. All right. 240 times 0 0.015 equals 3.6. 3.6 volts. 
is how much potential difference is across here. Okay, so my voltage across here is uh, 3.6. Now, I could have found this a different way. I know that for this outside loop, that the, the uh, change in potential for the entire loop must be zero, which means if I start here at zero potential, I gain 12, I go around this loop, I must lose a certain amount, and then I had already found that, that I had lost 8.4 here. So in order for the total to be back to zero, if this is 8.4, this must be 12 minus 8.4. So that would have been 3.6. So that, that would have been a shortcut, but okay. So now I know that the potential difference, I had to take information from here and go backwards. The potential difference, uh, because these are in parallel, the potential difference must be the same for both. And the potential difference across R2 is uh, 3.6 volts. And the potential difference across R3 must be 3.6 volts. All right, now I say R2. Um, so the question is, what is the, oh, sorry. Actually, I know that, so I can go ahead and plug it in here. Okay, uh, but the last thing I need to know is what is the current through two? Well, that is the um, uh, V or R. So potential difference across two is 3.6 divided by the resistance, which is 600. So what is the current? 3.6 divided by 600 is 0 0.006. Okay, what about three? And actually, I'll write that out here. Um, okay, <clears throat> and three would be the potential difference across three divided by the resistance of three. And uh, potential difference across was 3.6 is what we found. And then the resistance is 400. Um, all right, so this is now uh, 3.6 divided by 400. 0 .00, 0 0.009 amps. All right, and then this is 0 0.009 amps. And to find the power and multiply that by 3.6 and get 0 0.0324 watts. And then, uh, then do this one 2.006 times 3.6. Uh, oops, 0 0.006 times 3.6, 0 .0, 0 0.0216. Okay, <clears throat> now I need to check my answers. I'm going to go to green. I'll make it purple. The price shows up better. <clears throat> For any loop that I can imagine, right, the loop rule must apply. So from here, if I go from here, I'll take this outside outside loop, all right, then the potential difference must be zero as I go through. So I gain 12, I lose 3.6, I lose 8.4, and I, sh yeah, so 3.6, I had 12 and I lost 12, okay, that works. I go through this one, I gain 12 here, but then I lose 12, okay, that works. Okay, I go through this one, I gain, Sorry, gain 12 across the battery going this way, and then I lose 3.6, and then I uh, drop uh, 8.4. Okay, that works. Uh, the junction rule. I had uh, 0.03 amps coming out, all right? And then some of it went this way, some of it went that way. Um, so how much went this way was half of it. All right, so uh, 0 0.015, all right, now it didn't split again, so during this split, uh, 0 0.016 uh, went up this way, and 0 0.009 went that way, which means that the total together should add up to be uh, 0.15, which was coming in, and that is correct. Uh, how much goes through here? 0.15, and what happens is that it comes back at 0 0.15. Uh, sorry, point, sorry, my decimals are tough on this one. 0 0.015, and then this is point zero point <laughs> point zero one five, and this is 0 0.015, so they combine back to 
be 0 0.03, so this is correct. Okay, next up, same objectives. To find the current, the potential difference in the power consumed or converted uh, by each one of these resistors here. All right, and again, the goal is to shrink all of this down into one equivalent resistance before um, finding out the current that leaves the battery. And then once you know how much leaves the battery, then you go through and you go work backwards. So and that's as a first step, I always have to find the equivalent resistance. All right, so um, let's do, we have to find, look at one thing that is obviously in series or obviously in parallel. And again, our test is that a current a charge that leaves here has one option but to go through um, both resistors. That's the only option. That means that they're in series. So if a charge leaves here, it has to go through here. Okay, fine. But it has a choice of going this way or this way. All right, so that's not, um, that's not going to mean, that means that this is not in series with any of these. All right. All right, now let's say a charge leaves here. Um, okay, it, it, you know, has no, it cannot go loop back like this, so it hasn't anything else like that. So these must be not in series also. Um, and so this one's not in series, this is in parallel. So this is in parallel with something, that's in parallel with something. But here, if a charge goes down this wire, then it passes through this one, and it must pass through this one. So this is in series right here with each other. So that's going to be my weak spot to begin with. So I'm going to redraw the diagram. And second, I need to give these uh, R1, R2, R3s, R4s. Uh, I'll call this uh, R1. I'll keep it simple. This is R2 and R3. Uh, and this one must be, I'll call it R4. Okay, so R1 is uh, 5 ohms. Uh, R4 is 10 ohms, and uh, then this is going to be the combination of R2 and R3. Oops, 2, 3. Now these are in series, so you just add them up. So this is the equivalent of 10 ohms resistance right there. All right, again, this battery is still 10 volts. OK. So now I need to shrink this down to the next level. So this, right, a charge that leaves here has an option of going this way or that way. So that means that this it must be in parallel with these guys. Um, but what is obvious probably is the next step is that it's not in parallel with just this, and not parallel with just this, but in parallel with the combination of these two. All right? And so um, it's in the combination of, of, of these two. So what I need to do is shrink down these first. So I'm going to, as my next step, shrink down those. Uh, this is still R1, and I'm going to shrink these down into one equivalent resistance here. Uh, R1 is still 5 ohms. Um, and now R, this is going to be 2, 3, 4, is now a combination of these two. So 1 over R234 is 1 over R23 which we had already shrunk down right there, plus 1 over R4. Uh, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. That's 2 over 10, but that's not my answer because I have to flip. That's 10 over 2, which is equal to 5 ohm. So this is a 5 ohm resistor combination right there. Uh, by the way, if these two are values are the same, it just becomes half. So 10 and 10, so the equivalent is half of that. 10 volts right here. All right, now I'm in my last step. I now have a just two resistors to get to one equivalent. These are in series, so my equivalent is just the combination of those two. Series is equal, you just, I'm sorry, easy, you just add them up here. So I have 10 volts. And 10 ohms. So how much is coming out of how much current is coming out of my battery? Uh, the current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So I know that uh, this is 10 volts and this is 10 ohms equivalent. So one amp comes out of my battery.
1.0 amps. Okay? Now, that's just step one, because now I have to use this information. Okay, again, I switched to red because this shows I'm going backwards. I use this information to work backwards to find more and more things. So I take this information and I draw it first right here. And I say that one amp comes out of this battery. So how much goes through resistor one? Well, this is a series circuit. There's no splits. There's no junctions. So that one amp is actually all the way through this circuit as drawn right here. So how much goes through R1? One amp. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. One amp. Okay. How much potential difference is there across R1? All right. So find the potential difference across R1 is the current through resistor 1 times the resistance of resistor 1. So this is 1 amp that flows through and it's 5 ohms I'm oh, sorry, ohms of resistance. So I have 5 volts across resistor 1. Okay, uh, Power is always P equals IV so I take this category times that one so this is 5, five watts right there. Okay, now uh, one amp also flows through here. So I have a couple of strategies. Uh, one, I could say, okay, if this is, what's the uh, voltage across two, three, four? Uh, that could be the current of two, three, four. It's going through it uh, times resistance of two, three, four. I could find that that is one amp and uh, five ohms, so 5 volts. I could have also used loop rule, that if you gain 10 right here and you lose 5 volts right here, that you'd have to lose another 5. So I probably could have shortened that. That's fine. Alright, so I know that the potential difference is 5 volts across resistor equivalent of 2, 3, and 4. Now again, I'm going to take this information and move backwards here. So what do I know? I know that one amp goes, uh, the current here is one amp, all right, and it goes into the junction, and then it gets split right here. Now, because these two are equal, it'll actually get split equally, but only because they're equal. If this one had more resistance, it would get less current. If this one had uh, more resistance, it would get less current, okay? So actually, I know this, so that's actually nice and easy. Uh, this is still a combination here, so I'm going to focus just on this. I know that 0 0.5, again, this is really messy, but 0 0.5 amps flows through here. Uh, so I'm going to actually, that's the current through resistor 4. Um, okay, and then let's see, what else can I find out about resistor 4? If I know that 1 amp is flowing through this and there's a resistance of 10 ohms, then the voltage across, potential difference across resistor 4 is the current through 4 times the resistance of 4. The current is 0 0.5. Uh, the resistance is 10. So this has 5 volts across. Oh, darn it. I could have just known that too, because if the potential difference across this equivalent is 5 volts, then the potential difference across here is 5 volts, which means this is 5 volts. All right, well, I could have done that. But either way, there's multiple ways to do this. So this is now, uh, multiply those two together, 2.5 watts, I know this. All right, so for the next step, um, let's see, what do I know? I'm gonna take this information right here, that half an amp flows through here, and I'm gonna go up to my main diagram here. Now I know that a half an amp flows through here. Okay, so now resistor 2, how much current flows through? A half an amp. Resistor 3, how much current flows through? A half an amp. Okay. Um, next, I need to know these two categories, columns, and then I can find those. Um, okay, so let's see. The potential difference across resistor 2 um, potential difference across resistor 2 is going to be 
the current through 2 times the resistance of 2. Again, just Ohm's law over and over again. The current is 0 0.5. The resistance is 2, uh, sorry, uh, 5. And so the potential difference is 2.5. All right, multiply these together, and I get 1.25 watts. Uh, okay, these are the same. They have the same current going through them, uh, 0 0.5. They have the same resistance, 5 uh, ohms. So I get 2.5 volts also. All right, so this is 1.25 watts. Next, sorry, last, um, is I have to do loop rules, all right, to make sure, loop rule and then ju junction rule to make sure I got this right. Okay, how much, uh, let's see, let's go, uh, go to purple so I can check. All right, so this is zero, which means that this is 10, which means that this is 10, and there's a drop of how much? Uh, let's see, R1 has a potential difference of five, so this is now at a potential of five, which means that this is at a potential of five and this is a potential of five. So as I go around, I'm gonna do this loop first, then I'll do the overall, the wider loop. So, okay, I went up, I went up 10 and then I dropped five and then how much did I drop here? R4 is uh, five volts, so I dropped five, so I'm back to zero. Okay, that works, I'm okay with that. All right, let's go to the outer loop, zero, I add 10, I drop five, and then from here to here, how much did resistor two drop 2.5? So this is now at 2.5. So I dropped from 2.5, from five to 2.5. And then from here, that means that's 2.5. And then what happens on across resistor three is another 2.5 drop. So I'm back at zero, which puts me back at my level there. So this is. Okay, now for the last one and the hardest one. So I'm gonna need plenty of space. I actually made my graphic a little bit too large here, but I don't have to work with that. So, um, so again, what is the uh, the current, the potential difference in the power through this uh, combination here? And uh, again, I have five resistors in this case. So uh, I'll call this one resistor one. I'll call this resistor two. Resistor 3, resistor 4, and resistor 5. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is shrink this down to an equivalent resistance of, well, I need to go all the way down to equivalent resistance of just one resistor. Um, but i got to figure out which one I want to shrink first. So, okay, this one's out on its own, it branches, so really it's in series with all of this together, so that doesn't really help. Uh, this is in parallel with this entire branch right here. This is in series with everything else on the branch, but I don't know, what, it's not in series with this and it's not in series with that. So what I need to do is first take this and shrink it down. These are in parallel. Now, it may look odd because it doesn't, you know, it, you know, this is typically how it's drawn without this and this. But again, it's the same idea where uh, these are in parallel because a charge that goes through this doesn't have to go through there. All right, so I'm going to shrink this one down into one first. All right, we're going to have a lot of steps on this one. So resistor one is four ohms, and it comes down here. Resistor 2 is the same, which is 6 ohms. Uh, but now there's going to be some kind of equivalent right here. Let me go back around. And this is going to be resistor uh, 3, 4. And I'll find out what that is in a little bit. And this is still resistor 5 being 24 ohms. Okay. Uh, so I need to know what this is right here. So let's see. Uh, I'll do some scratch work over here. Resistor 3, 4. The resistance, since they are in parallel, has to be added like this. So 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. Um, that's the same thing as 3 over 24 plus 1, 24. Is 4, 24. 
four, and then I have to flip these values, so that's 24 divided by four, so resistor three, four is six ohms, okay? So this is six ohms, okay? Uh, this is still 24 volts coming out of the battery. So now I look at this and I need to find two that are obviously in series or obviously in parallel. Um, all right, so this is my next target because these are obviously in series. The charge that leaves here has to go through this one and has to go through that one. So let's shrink this down a bit more and shrink that into one resistor. Still my outer loop. So I'm going to start labeling these two, three, right? Uh, this is still 24 volts, and resistor one hasn't changed. This is four ohms. This is five, uh, sorry, resistor five is 24 ohms. Okay, and then now, um, now we have, okay, this equivalent right here of resistor two, three, and four combined. Uh, these are in series, so they just add up uh, nice and neat. Okay. Next, this will be diagram four. I need to shrink down this. Uh, this is in series with this entire combination, so I can't do anything until I shrink these down. These are in parallel with each other, so um, that's what's gonna be my next step right there. So, go we have the battery, R1 stays the same. I'm gonna shrink that down into one right there. Uh, so R1 is four ohms, and R, this is gonna be R2, three, four, and five combined together. And I'm gonna have to find out what this value is. Again, this battery is still 24 volts. Okay, so let's find one over, this is parallel, so one over two, three, four, and five is going to be a uh, resistance of two, three, and four to, you know, combined, which is right there, uh, plus a uh, resistance of five. So this is one over 12 plus one over 24. Uh, so that's 224 plus 124. That's 324s. Flip that over. That's 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3 is going to be 8. So resistance of 2, 3, 4, and 5 is 8 ohms. So I know this is 8 ohms. Okay. Uh, now the last one is for um, for 5. Fifth diagram is one equivalent resistance of, um, okay, these are in series, so the total equivalent is 12 ohms, and this is 24 volts, okay? And so now, I, next thing is how much current is coming out, all right? So I equals V, which is 24 volts, divided by 12 uh, ohms of resistance. This is ohms law right here, so I get two amps. So two amps comes out of the battery. All right, once I find that value, I now work backwards to find all my individual ones. So I take the information that I gained here and I move it to the one previously. So two amps comes out of the battery. So the question becomes how much current flows through R1. Well, again, this is a simple series circuit, so this two amps flows through all of this equally. So how much goes through R1? Two amps. Okay. Now, uh, what is the potential difference across R1? Uh, Ohm's law. Okay, potential difference against one is the current going through one times the resistance of one. The current is two amps, Resistance of R1 is 4 uh, ohms, so that's 8 volts right there. 
Okay, and the power is always power IV. So uh, multiply these two together and I get 16 watts. All right, now I gotta go through here. Okay, so here, uh, I know that two amps flows through here. Um, well, I also know that this is a drop of eight volts. And so uh, if this is 24 volts of the battery, uh, a loop rule will tell me that I gain 24 and I lose eight. So how much more do I have to lose? I have to lose uh, 16 volts right here. So I know that potential difference across two, three, four, and five combination is 16 volts, okay? Which means I take that information, take everything I know over here, and I have two amps coming this way. I know I have some kind of current going that way and I have some kind of current going this way. Uh, these are not equivalent, so I can't just split them in half, okay? These are not uh, equal, but I do know that at 24 volts here, this is added 24, I dropped eight, and from here to here, that, because all this was one equivalent, was 16 volts, which means that this is also 16 volts across, and this is 16 volts across. So what's the potential difference across R5? 16 volts, okay? What is the current through R5? That is the potential difference across 5 divided by the resistance of 5. Potential difference is 16. Uh, resistance is 24. Um, so this is, what, 2 two thirds? Yeah, 2 thirds, 0 0.66 repeating uh, amps. 6, 6 repeating amps. And... Um, so yes, yeah, so what's two thirds of 16? Oh, oh, that's gonna be messy. Uh, two times 16 divided by three. Uh, 10 point, okay. So there's a 10 point, I'll just keep it 10.7 uh, watts. Actually, I'll just do 10.6 6 repeating uh, watts. Okay. Uh, so I got that. So I got to say, okay, I know that. Oh, how much current did I say? Okay, so how much current flew, flowed through here? 0 0.66 amps flows through this branch right here because I just found how much flew, uh, flowed through uh, R5. If 2 amps came in and 0 0.66 went this way, how much goes this way? Well, that's actually going to be 1.33 amps because these two must add up to be how much flowed in, All right? I could have also done um, uh, Ohm's law with this resistance and that potential difference there. Now I'd get the same 16 divided by that, which would be um, what, four thirds. Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna take the information I know here and apply it to here. So I knew, I now know that going through here, there's a current of uh, one point three amps. Okay, so how much goes through R2? 1.33 amps. Okay, um, so if I know the current through R2 is 1.33 and I know the resistance is 6, then I can find the potential difference of 2, which is um, the current through 2 times the resistance of 2. The current is 1.33 or 4 thirds uh, times 6. So 4 thirds times uh, 6. My brain is uh, messing with me now. So is that going to be 8? Let me make sure. Yep. So 8 volts. So now I know this is eight volts, okay? And that's gonna be times 1.33 for power. So this is 10.64 watts. Again, I use that, this times this is that. <clears throat> okay. Um, yep, yeah. okay, so let's see. Next step, I'm down to just three and four. 
I know that here, uh, 1.33 amps flows through here. Um, if I know that, so I know that, okay, going into this junction, I go back to my original drawing, 1.33 amps. I know some of it's going to go this way, and some of it's going to go this way. Okay, I don't know how much. If they were equal, I could it would be a 50-50 split, but they are not. So what I need to know, in order to know how much current goes this way, and, sorry, how much goes this way versus this way, I need to know the potential difference across it. Uh, I have a couple options. I could do a loop rule, since I already know a bunch of these things. Uh, or I could say, okay, if 1.3 amps flows through this equivalent resistance, then what is the potential difference of across that equivalent resistance right there of three and four? So just like this, I can do it, but again, it's, it's just gonna find out the potential difference across three and four combined. So this is I uh, three, four times resistance of three, four. Uh, the current going through three, four has to be 1.33 amps. And then the resistance of three, four uh, we found that equivalent to be um, 6 ohms. So now I have 4 thirds times 6. Well, okay, this is also 8, uh, eight volts. Okay, the loop rule would have done the same thing. If I go here, I go 0, I gain 24, then I lose 8. Uh, then I go through this part right here, I lose 8. So this has to be another loss of 8 in, in order to make it around to be 24. Okay, so... I know that the potential difference between here and here, or anywhere down here, doesn't matter, is, um, I know that potential difference is 8 volts, so that means the potential difference across here is 8 volts, and the potential difference across here is 8 volts. So, 8 volts, 8 volts. Alright, now let's say resistor 3, I need to know the current through, so the current through resistor 3, is the potential difference across three divided by the resistance of three, Ohm's law. Uh, potential difference of three, I just found out to be eight volts. Uh, the resistance of three is eight ohms. So that means the current is one amp. Okay, so that means I know that out of 1.3 flowing in, one went this way. So how much went this way? 0.3. Okay, because the total going into a junction must be equal to the total leaving a junction, and they combine back together here. I could have also said 8, um, you know, this is 8 volts here. So, for example, I could have also done uh, 8 volts divided by the resistance here, 24. That would also be one third, you know, whatever. So, this is 0 0.33 amps. Um, so, this is 8 watts. And this is, um, I gotta do that, um, 8 uh, times 0.333. Alright, 2. 2.6 repeating. Okay, so now I, got, now I got my chart and let's do some checking. So I'm gonna switch to my purple. Alright, 2 amps leaves here, which means 2 amps goes right here. I'm going to start with current here. Uh, how much did I say went this way through R5? Uh, R5 had da, 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 0 0.66. Okay, how much did I say I went through here? Um, well, how much goes through R2? 1.33. All right, did, does that follow the rule? Two amps in, two amps out, yes. Okay, and they'll combine back here. Okay, now let's do a loop rule. Uh, I can pick any loop. It could be this one right here. This one, it should apply to all of my loops. All right, so I, uh, I gain 24. So I have 24 here. I have zero here. I come here, and then across R1, I lose eight. So this is 24, which means that this is now 16. Okay, if this is 16, then this is 16. And this is 16, because they're all the same potential and they're the same thing. So R5 said it lost 16 volts, which means this is at zero. Does that make sense? Yep, because it's back on the same wire as zero. Uh, if I go through here, uh, 16 right here, uh, R2 loses eight. 
So that means that this is at 8. And if that's at 8, then this is at 8. And this is at 8. We said R3 loses 8. So if that's at 8 and it loses 8, this is at 0. Oh, makes sense. Uh, okay, also R4, if this is at 8 right here, uh, and then it loses uh, 8, uh, then this is going to be at 0, and I'm back on my base wire at 0. So I have checked using the junction rule, and I could have used junction rule right here too, and I've checked using the um, loop rule, so I am good, and I am done, and this is my answer, and that is the 